Hello, I am Ali from S4. This is the biology video, and in this we will be having a little introduction to cells. So, with that in mind, first question I suppose we should ask ourselves is well, what are cells? So cells are the smallest part that make up all living organisms. They are often called the building blocks of life. So cells have a basic structure, kind of looks like a weird little fried egg shape. They have a cell membrane that surrounds the outside of the cell, keeps everything in. It also is what allows waste products and nutrients in and out of the cell. They also have a nucleus. So that contains the DNA, which is the genetic material of all living organisms. So that's what tells the cells things that they should be making, what proteins and enzymes and things they should be doing, and what jobs they should be doing to make sure that their organism functions properly and can grow and reproduce. Inside the cell, in the centre, is a gooey-like substance that's called cytoplasm. This is where all the important chemical reactions of a cell take place. So all these little structures, they are called organelles. So organelles are specialised to perform certain jobs inside and within a cell to help them all function properly. They all have different job roles they are all responsible for. And we're going to focus on two at the moment. The first one, so this is the chloroplast. So chloroplast contains a green pigment, which is why it's this green colour. This green pigment is called chlorophyll, and this is where photosynthesis occurs. So photosynthesis is the process where plants take energy from the sun to make sugar. Other organelle that we're going to focus on, it's also very important is the mitochondria. So the mitochondria is the organelle in which respiration takes place. So respiration is a process all living organisms undergo where they release the energy from sugar to be able to live and survive. So plants and animals are two organisms. Their cells look very different from one another. It's not just their shape in which they differ from one another, also from the organelles that they contain. So animal cells have all the organelles which we discussed. They have their cell membrane on the outside. They have their nucleus that contains all their genetic material. And they also have their cytoplasm and all their little mitochondria so that they can respire. Plants have all these same ones too. They have their membrane, they have their nucleus, they have their mitochondria. They also have other ones that animal cells don't have. So they have an organelle that runs around the outside of the cell membrane called a cell wall. So this is a structure that helps add stability to the cell, which helps gives that plant cell a distinguishable rigid shape. They also contain chloroplasts so that the plants can photosynthesize and make sugars for respiration. Because animals, they get their sugar for respiration by eating food. Plants have to make their own sugar and they do this using the energy from the sun with their chloroplasts. They also have this big bit in the middle called a vacuole. So the vacuole is like a closed sack containing sap and it's full of water and other nutrients and sugars. They have an important role in cells in maintaining structural support, just like the cell wall does. Because they take in and release water, this vacuole can grow and shrink. And when it's shrunk, the cell is less rigid. And when there's more water in it and it grows, it pushes against the cell membrane and the cell wall and adds some firm stability to it. It also is a site for storage. 
so it will take in any waste products and isolate any harmful molecules that the plant doesn't want in its cell out of the way to keep the rest of the organelles safe. Not all cells follow this basic structure and shape them. Cells, just like organelles, can be highly specialised to do certain jobs. The first one is this cool round disc. This is a red blood cell. So red blood cells are one of the smallest cells you can find in the human body. And their job is to carry oxygen all around your body. And because of this, they have adapted and changed. They look really strange compared to normal cells because they're completely devoid of organelles. And this is to make sure that they free up as much space as they can to carry oxygen because they don't need to be able to do anything else other than carry oxygen around your body. So they have no other organelles inside them. They're completely spare, just so all of their surface area can be taken up just for um, transporting oxygen. The other one is a plant cell. Unlike the other plant cells, it also devoid of a lot of other organelles. So this is a root hair cell. So it has that rigid structure and it has a cell wall just like other plant cells do, but it also has this protruding part because this goes into the roots. The root, this is the hair coming off the root. It has a really big vacuole, but it doesn't have any chloroplasts because unlike the rest of a plant, this is in the soil, so it doesn't get exposed to any light. So it doesn't need to be able to photosynthesize, which is why it doesn't have any chloroplasts. What it does need to do as it's part of, as it's part of a root is taking water, so it has most of its shape is taken up by this big vacuole in the middle because its main job is to take in water so that it can go up through the stem to the rest of the plant. One other specialised weird looking cell is a nerve cell. Nerve cells are all throughout your nervous system. They are responsible for transmitting signals from your sense organs to the rest of your body and because of this they have these branches these branches will pick up information such as um, you touching something really hot and they will transport that information down into muscles. So these little branches are in muscles and in sense organs to pick up and transport and send information to different parts of your body. Now there are loads of other specialised cells, way too many to get into. So what you can do for me is share your cells with us from home. So have a little look around or even just draw some of the ones I've done today and you can send them to us on Facebook, you can send them to us over Twitter at swansci4 and use the hashtag s4science and show us the cool cell drawings that you can come up with yourself, show us some of your favourite specialised cells and show up my drawing for me. I look forward to seeing you super soon with another biology video for you. <laughs>